But some toxic behavior can be so severe that the player has to immediately be removed from your table. And as the GM, you need to be ready to do that. Hi, my name is Fondu. I run this channel called Dice and Easy, where I give you Foundry VTT tutorials and tips and tricks, TTRPG general tips, and daily TTRPG memes as YouTube shorts. So if you like that, hit that subscribe button down there. I'm sure at some point in your life, you've met a toxic D&D &D player or TTRPG player. You might even be in a group with one right now. Well, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to deal with a toxic player in a constructive and efficient manner. Note that this toxicity that I'm talking about can vary from mild things like talking over people, interrupting people, and all the way to severe stuff like berating other players, yelling at them, abusing them, stuff like that. Note that there is a huge range of what this applies to. The aim of this video is to give you tools that you can use so that a toxic player can turn into a positive influence at your table, because that's what we want at the end of the day. We want that toxic person to become a positive influence instead. With that out of the way, let's talk about this from the Dungeon Master or Game Master's perspective. Going forward, I'm going to be using GM as an abbreviation for Game Master, which applies also to Dungeon Masters or DMs. Anyway, moving on. As the GM, you are the arbiter of who gets to sit at your table and who doesn't. And as such, it is your job to make sure that your players feel comfortable sitting and playing at your table. If you have a toxic player that you notice, always approach them with the benefit of the doubt that they are human and just making mistakes rather than that they are trying to be malicious and that's why they are being toxic. Because you never know what someone else is going through in their personal life that might affect how they act at your table. When you notice a player behaving toxically at your table, your first goal should be to try to turn them from being toxic to being a positive influence at your table. Because they might not even know that they're behaving in a toxic manner that is upsetting people. That could be the case. So what I want you to do is as follows. First, take them aside and discuss the issue privately, whether that be online through a one-on-one -on -one call or them staying after everyone else has left the session to discuss the issue with them. In my opinion, this discussion shouldn't happen in front of the whole table. It's a private discussion that you and the other player need to have to figure things out. When you start the conversation, describe their actions and what are the consequences of those actions. For example, hey, I noticed that sometimes you're interrupting the other players when they're trying to talk amongst each other or tell me what to do, which means that they can't tell their own stories fully and robs them of their agency. This can lead to them feeling ignored and that's not really nice and I don't want that at my table. After that, tell them what you expect from them going forward. For example, I'd like to ask you to not interrupt the other players going forward, and I'm going to be stepping in more and making sure that that does not happen anymore and pointing it out to you. Of course, the conversation will flow in a much more natural way rather than this rigid example that I gave you, but I'm just giving you the stepping stones and the tools so that you know what to say to them or how to approach them. Because you don't know why they might be doing what they're doing. You don't know how they're gonna respond to you bringing it up, which is why these conversations aren't easy. They can even be heavy and stressful, so don't feel bad for feeling nervous. It's very normal. These conversations are not necessarily fun. Once you've had this conversation with them, observe their behavior, but don't expect them to immediately become perfect and forget that old behavior because change takes time. So give them the time to change, of course, depending on the severity of the situation, which I'll talk about later as well. Unfortunately, sometimes conversations like this don't work and the bad behavior continues, in which case you have to pull them aside again and talk to them again about this, or you have to consider asking them to leave your group. But some toxic behavior can be so severe that the player has to immediately be removed from your table, and as the GM, you need to be ready to do that. Because in the end, the players at your table should be comfortable playing at your table. They should feel safe. They should feel welcomed. There's one player who is behaving in a severely toxic manner that throws that balance off completely, you need to do something. Okay, we talked about the GM noticing a toxic player, but what if you are another player and you notice another player behaving toxically? First of all, let your GM know privately once again that you are finding this particular player's behavior toxic. 
describe the behavior like I just said before and its consequences, you know, person X did Y, which made me feel like Z. That's a good format to kind of talk about these types of things. Again, people are different and different things upset different people. So the GM might not even know that it's an issue that's festering. So it's good to bring these up to the GM. And then you should ask your GM if they could talk to the other player to resolve this issue. In my opinion, it's important to go through the GM with these types of issues so that the GM knows of any potential problems that might be happening at the table that they might be missing. But if you want to discuss with the person one-on-one -on -one directly, you can of course also do that. This of course begs the question, what if the GM is the toxic one? This can be a very tricky and difficult situation to find yourself in. Again, I want to emphasize the severity of the issue affects how you should approach this. For minor issues, talk to the GM privately once again and describe the problematic behavior and its consequences. And then ask the GM, please, can you change the way that you behave? Again, give them time to change their behavior. Changing behaviors take some time. And for minor issues, usually you should have some patience for change. However, if your GM's toxic behavior is on a major or severe level, check with the rest of the players on how they're feeling about the GM's behavior. Chances are, if the GM is behaving toxically in a major or severe way, the other players are feeling it as well. Then you might have to talk with the GM as a whole group to make the GM understand that their actions are having a severe negative impact on the table, all of the table. And then for both of these minor or major issues, if the discussion doesn't help and your GM does not change their behavior, you might have to talk to them again, or in some cases, leave the table and find another more suitable GM. Remember, all the people at the tables that you play at are human, and as such, they make mistakes. And they might not even know that they're behaving in ways that is, are toxic or hurtful to others. This is not to say that you should put up with all kind of behavior, especially severe one, but that you should show a degree of patience and understanding because people are different and we don't always understand each other as we would like to. Are these tools that you would use to diffuse such situations? Leave a comment down below in the comment box. Let me know how you would deal with a toxic D&D player. And if you found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe while you are down there because I'm trying to grow this channel. It's a passion project of mine and it would really help me out. I also stream on twitch.tv slash dice and easy every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern European Standard Time. And you can find the link to that also in the description box down there. And on the screen right now, you're gonna see another video of mine, which is going to be a nice one. And I think you should watch it. All right then, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.